Welcome back to the hottest show in the galaxy, the Karen Hunter Show, Series XM, Urban View, Channel 126, and just Wendy is in the building. Yeah. Are you and trade? Did you trademark that? Did you trademark it? No, but uh, whatever. You should. What I uh, keep forgetting to tell staff is change it in the prompter because at the end of the show it says Wendy Williams Hunter. And I just want just Wendy. And for the Jerry O show, it's not on yet, but it's just Wendy. Ju just just Wendy. Wendy. And if you're 25 or younger, it's Miss Wendy. Why, you know. why is that important? Well, part of the unstableness of our society is that kids call their mothers Beverly. And they call their parents' friends, hi, Sam, hi, Mark. Like, what is that? I grew up calling everybody Mr. and Mrs. It's still to this day, still to this day. You know, and I'm grown. And my parents' friends all watch the show. So they see me twerking and jerking and rubbing my teeth and stuff. When I see them, they're like, oh, Wendy. I'm like, oh, you know, Dr. Ellison, it's so good to see you. You know, Jay Hunter was at my party. Yes. You met my friend Jay yes. Hunter. Not related. Not, right. not related it's again. Oh, my name. gosh, this name. Nope. But Dr. Ell that's, that's a woman, uh, you know, one of my mother's besties. And, um, you know, oh, Dr. Ellison, so good to see you. Oh, Wendy, call me Skippy. I'm like, no, Dr. Ellison, you're Dr. First of all, you're my elder statesman. Second of all, you earned that DR, something that I so love. I love a doctor. If you Do you love a doctor? I love a doctor. Is it love? If you, if you follow my career, then you know that I've always had respect for the DR period, whether you're a medical doctor or whether it's a PhD doctor. There's something about putting in all that work and getting your doctorate. And that is, I would love to get my doctorate no. on the other side of it. We've, I know. That's what I'm like, you know, when, when, when I've been watching you over the mm -hmm. years, since we don't, you do it, you stop it. Stop it. Okay. All right. You pick know. Pick a finger. So, so I'm going to tell you. No, I'm not going to pick any finger. But I, I actually, have desires. I know. Because I won't be on TV forever. Yes. Which is why you're producing and doing all these other things. I Correct. Got you. Correct. And one of my big desires is to step into the classroom on the college level because, uh, you know, a lot of people are wasting a lot of money on a college education and you're taught by people who never did what they're teaching. Like, I never had a professor, and I graduated on time, never summer school, nothing, on time. As a matter of fact, Northeastern's a five-year school, but they were no good for my co-op. I got my own internships and figured out my own mess. I graduated in four years, but I never had a professor, all due respect, that cracked the mic. So why am I in your class? Who are you talking to? I think I'll cut class today and go find myself an internship with, with a master. And I interned for Matt Siegel at KISS 108 in Boston. Matt still holds the crown in Boston, which is still unbelievable to me. Like, the one I interned for is still doing his thing. He's very well appointed. The, the city bows down to his feet. And every time I go to Boston to promote my talk show, it's always a must stop. Like, look, I done good. And I, and I love, that's what I'm trying to create with my show. Uh, and my radio career and everything. It's like I want to get to a place where people come to me and they're a product of, of my environment. And they say, this is what you taught me or that's what you taught me or whatever. And I get that now. And I don't feel old at all. I feel proud. I feel like the mother of the house. So, you know, so I want to get back in college but teaching, I want to be a professor, and I do want my doctorate. I do want my doctorate, and I do want to profess. And I know that I don't have to have a doctorate to profess, but I'm just obsessed with making reservations because doctors get the best tables. <laughs> this is Dr. Just Wendy. <laughs> Dr. Just. <laughs> um, I would like to have the window seat at. You know, you know what I mean. There's something. And you pop your mouth. And pop my mouth. So yes, Karen, I do love a doctor. Huh. Okay. Uh, we're we're in the building that Howard Stern built. And you named him as one of the people that you admire. Yeah. Y'all had some beef. Um, yeah. Are y'all good now? Wonderful. Okay. What did you learn from him? Because he was the king of all media, or still is. 
Howard's comic stylings delighted me up and down when I was making $9,000 a year in, in D.C. and I got a part-time job, a weekend fill-in at a station here in New York called Hot 103.9. I don't know if you remember it, but long before Hot 97, it was freestyle music playing, you know, um, the cover girls and a new girl on the scene named Paula Abdul. You know, BLS and Kiss weren't playing those things, you know, so freestyle music was the thing, and I and I was a part-time jock there. And I, my hustle was running back, I had a full time in DC, and only on the weekends in, in New York. And Howard was syndicated through Philly, through New Jersey, through DC, so, so all you had to do was change the station and you're still jumping in on the same conversation. Um, I sensed his um, other side, you know, like when the mic goes off and he used to describe, you know, going in his basement and writing scripts or whatever stuff he was doing while Allison, his wife at the time, was upstairs, you know, in the mansion with the kids, raising kids and, you know, creating dinner parties or whatever Allison was doing. But it, it's a very weird thing uh, to be alone in the room with a mic talking to millions of people. Mm. And then you go outside and people say hi. And all you're thinking in your mind is, I'm in this room uh, by myself with this dusty mic and some stupid leggings. I mean, not Howard, me. You. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you, you rock leggings. And 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 um, I have a flat booty, though. Look, my friend Medina told me about the thread. You get this thread, you push it down. The, the doctor, you can do it at lunchtime. I'm not doing it because I like to sit. So what now? So you do. <laughs> look, 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 look. Because she got the thread. She, she said she'll share it with you. I'm not talking out of school. You do what with the thread? Okay. You drop, the, the doctor at lunchtime drops it down both booty cheeks, right? It's a cable, metal, and pulls for the guards, pulls it up. And <laughs> look, look, girl, look, you, you already have a big booty, but I have a flat booty, right? And the older you get, the more it sags, depending. And I know I wear leggings like I don't care because I don't care. I, you know, she does I, not care. Stop looking back there and stop looking at my ankles. You know, I'm just <laughs> Wendy. I'm Question. just Wendy. All right, so your booty's flat. Okay. And that's your booty. Yeah. But then you enhance the front. Yeah, 1994. Because I remember before those. Did you yes. see that trick? Did you yeah. see my trick? Okay. She, yeah. She's flexing her pec. She's doing a Terry Crews for yeah. those of you who cannot Under see. Under the muscle implants. Okay. Yeah, 1994. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why do this and now everyone's doing the back? Why not do the back? Well, you, I did not. this in 94 when the booty thing wasn't the thing and celebrities weren't even talking about what they got done. And I was. If anybody remembers Wendy on Hot 97, I had the light bulb lunch. I told you all about it. Everybody's like, oh, Wendy, you're whack. Yeah. First, you're talking about R. Kelly. Now you're talking about Bill Cosby. Now you're talking about surgery. And I'll be damned, 100 years later, and you were right who about was everybody. right? Who was yeah. correct? Now these girls brag about what they've gotten done. Girls don't have natural bodies anymore. Bill Cosby is locked up. Camille has fled the scene. I don't care what you say. That's, that's the long and suffering. So what? So and, 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 and R. Kelly is, is everything I said. Yeah. But you yeah. want to call me and tell me, why are you talking about our people? Or why are you talking about people? And, and good black don't crack. You're fake. Why'd you get liposuction? Why'd you get breast implants? I was an OG before OG was invented, okay? And now I just sit on my purple throne on the talk show saying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. which happens to be the name so of the I got comedy them done. I, right. I got them done because, like, you know, I grew up a fat girl. We talked about this. Karen is the author of my autobiography, which came out in 2002 I don't even remember. or something. Yeah. It became a New York Times bestseller, and and... I was introduced to Karen because Karen had a great relationship with Atria Books. Simon Schuster, yeah. Simon Schuster Books. And when you get a co-writer, you just can't, like, sir, you might write very well, but 
if you don't have a relationship with the with the publisher, you know, then you're going to be going back and forth with the manuscript. It's going to take forever for the book to come out. You might be brilliant, but you know, and I was young in the game of writing and authoring and things like that. So I said, all right, well, you know what? Then give me somebody that you have on staff, somebody that you trust that, that's going to turn this book out. All I want to do is tell my story, turn on your microphone. I'm not writing anything. And you know what? I don't want to meet, you know, at Barney's, you know, at Fred's in the back with the chicken liver. I'm going to, I trust you. I'm going to invite you to my home. And this is the home that I shared with, you know, big Kevin, little Kevin, we didn't have a live-in help at that time, so there no, was nobody did not. there. No, yeah. you would have live-in help. You yeah. would have cooked the cleaner. The, yeah. yeah, no, no, I wasn't. You, you cooked. We had no you cooked meals. Well, I cooked meals because I like cooking. Right. But we had day help. But look, she came to our home, and we would sit in the family room or in the kitchen or whatever we're doing, and it was some real. Here comes Wendy with a robe on, not looking frumpy, because I I like to be lit even in the house. The thing is, is that I do it for me, you know, not for. The people like when you're in your home and you pass your mirror why are you wearing those sweatpants I own one pair of sweatpants you know what I'm saying and a big t-shirt are you you better knot that like you see how I have a knot on I my t-shirt I see you, knot. you better knot your t-shirt hold your stomach in and at least put chapstick on <laughs> at least even on the rainiest day when you're by yourself, it makes you feel good. For me, it makes me feel good. Like when I walk past the mirror and I'm like, I like her. Or you know what? It's a bad day for her. So Karen, this is how Karen and I got to be intimate friends as opposed to just, you know, some woman whose show I'm on right now. When does this air, by the way? Tomorrow. Uh, maybe Thursday. What's the day? Well, the good thing is One that... these days. Whenever you hear it, you'll hear it. Yeah, you know what? But you have to tell me so I can promote it on my show. Oh. I didn't talk about it today okay. because um, I didn't want the paparazzi to follow me. But they were here anyway. I had no idea. So who called them? I don't know. And there were somebody out, out and, there. And some different ones were outside of my office today. See? And they're always so outside of my for... building where I live in my bachelorette pad. And, you know, I can go into the MJ trim shop because, you know, I'm a crafter to buy some beads and new thread and patches and stuff. And there they are again. I don't know. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Y'all got to edit that out. Okay. Wendy no, Williams why are you here. editing? Just Wendy. Sorry. is here. Just Wendy. Why would you want to keep that in there? What? Just what? Okay. Because just... editing is for fake. Like, that's what I like live from New York. It's Wendy. Anything could happen. Hurry up. Let's get this done. At 11 a.m., I got other things to do. I like live. I've been used to live with radio. You know what I'm saying? Editing is for fake. It's like people who Photoshop their selfies. What are you doing? You know, you know what I'm saying? People see you in real life. They see your waist doesn't look like that. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? It's like if, if, I, if I had a tape talk show, right? And my very clever staff, you know, had time to edit it. Because talk shows like Rachel Ray, who I love, she's in the same building as me. Rachel works, I think, three times a week. But what she does is she does like three shows a day, three times a week, or whatever it is. But when you tape something, then they meticulously edit this out, edit that out. It becomes too perfect. Then when you... If, if I was edited, then when you see me or talk to me in public, you'd be like, well, who are you? Okay. Instead, now you're seeing me live in front of you and you say, I know exactly who that is. Somebody it's, that it's who? on the air. Just Wendy. Wendy. All right. So who Same is? Same girl from the, from the TV and the radio talking to you now. So who is Wendy right now? Happy. Are you? Yeah. Yes, yes, Karen, yes. I, you know what, Karen? I am help. I'm happy. I'm healthy, despite yeah, my anxiety. Yeah, that's that's. And and I am at peace with the world and everyone around me. The cops aren't protecting me, so I learn how to run. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to get splashed in the face. Um, I am going through a situation in my family. And, I'm, and I need to ask you, because I was in the midst of some of that, which is why we didn't talk for so long, right? I know, I know, Karen, but, I'm embarrassed. But, no, I know, so so, and that's that's no indictment I mean, on you. I mean, not to them, not to you yeah. listeners, but to, to you. 
at the end of the day, the story listen, let me tell you, let me tell you, criminal. I, I mean, not, not, no, not no, that no, he's it's a criminal, all right. Criminal, it's all right. That, look, it was, look, 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 I, I went to your house right after all of this stuff happened. The last address that I knew for you. And I, I've been carrying this around for like months. Oh. Right. Oh my gosh. And so, because Are you serious? I, yeah, because I wanted you to know that. Wait, knowing you. Wait, wait. Back up, and start again. And can I read this on the air? No. Okay, you've been carrying this around to yeah. give to me. Yep. After yep. you were dismissed from our lives. Yes, because which we, I didn't know that you were dismissed. Okay. I thought no, well, that you I just, dismissed myself. I thought that you just backed out and got busy, Karen. I yeah. found my phone book, you know, in the library. Darling, um, of of my old um, abode, um, but I. But that's why I keep my phone books. And I called your number, and you answered. You've been carrying this around all these years. No, since this last thing happened with you and Kevin, and I realized that you must be incredibly alone, even though you have your family and all things right, so like that. And I wanted you months. to know that no matter what happened, no matter what happened between us, right, or whatever, no matter what this. happened, you know, you I, read I, this I, in your private home okay, or whatever. Okay. Whatever, whatever happened, I needed you to know that there's somebody in this world that has you. You're a jerk. Right? You're a jerk. No, I'm not. But can you I say just, asshole on yeah, your show? Yeah, you can say a whole. It's a serious XM. You can cuss. But Stop. The, but I asked the question: Are you okay? And who is Wendy? Because I need all of that oh to my come gosh. to the forefront. Wait, you wrote yes. my name yes. and, and addressed I was, it. But I was, there's no stamp. I was. Go- I drove to that address. And I was going to leave it because I hadn't, you know, I didn't know where you lived. I was even talking to a few people here right. to see if they could give it to you because I wanted to hand give it to you. I and wanted, we had moved. Did I know. anyone answer the door? Yes. There was a, an Indian Latino, family. Was, uh, I thought he was Latino. It was a brown person answered the door. Right. Yes. The yes. chandelier was still there. Thank was, you, darling. Yes. yes. Darling, <laughs> I was darling. like, I know this is her house. The chandelier is still there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I... I was I gonna throw my it chandelier, out. by the way, Did and you? they That's put, they put up. another one up because they must have loved it. <laughs> and and guess what? And and it's um plastic. It's not Swarovski. Okay. Well, yeah, so it's not everyone can afford I've, that. Because I've written, so, you know how you ride past your old house to see how they messed it up or made it better or whatever. <laughs> They cut down all the shrubs. Yeah, they did. Please, the lawn man and I, like you have no idea what the little woman I am. The dishwasher's working and the lawn looks beautiful and these are the things that make me happy for real, not for fake, you know? And um, riding past the house, they undid everything. But knowing you, being de- knowing that you like family, you like being a wife, you, you like being yes, you yes, like I am. All of I'm that. very domesticated. So all of this now, so is my mom. Yes, my, one of my heroes. This is, yep. this is your foundation. Yep. This is who you are, and this is who you're always going to yep. be. Yep. So yep. you know, I'm, I'm, when you brought the guy to and dinner, and I'm a wife, not a girlfriend. No, exactly. It's evil out here in these streets. Right. Uh, like back to the wig. And when do you do a number two? Because see, I I will not. <laughs> I will not do a number two in front of somebody that I'm dating. I'm, I don't mean in front like they see it. I just mean... Where they come in the bathroom behind you or you're sitting and talking girl, on the toilet. Girl, girl, I I've promise you, whole, you will. I've, no, I, no, no, I, I promise I, you, no, you will. I won't. No, you I, will. Well, no, I will remove my wig. It has to be 30 hits, see? And, and look, if you know what I'm saying. Look, this, these are the new rules. You know what? As a matter of fact, so just what do you, come what do you see, count? Keeping little, how are you keeping count? Come see me on tour. I've got the rest of the story, except I'll be cursing in a, in a glitter romper, back and forth. How do I keep count? Yeah, I have a planner. Okay. <laughs> All right, right, okay. Date number one, and if that date lasts, like, say you ask me to run away to, uh, you know, St. Thomas for the weekend. That's only one date. You see, so no, even if you hit it ten times. Yep, yep. That's one. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You know, you got to get the math right, girls. Because now that I'm out here, I, I didn't think I'd be doing math, Karen. I, th- I know. That's why I I'm thought, so. Um, is there a chance? And, and this is very complicated um, with everything. No. Is there a don't chance? Don't ask. Is there a chance? No. Girl. No. Don't ask. Okay. I know what you're saying. But my family's good and will always be family. What am I doing? I remember in the book. (sighs) Just Wendy. Yeah. (sighs) What what precipitated this this card was that there was something that you said because you you went through a whole. That book was one of the best books ever in the history of books. I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. Thank you. But because you were so 
gut level, honest and raw and real. And those, your book and LL Cool J's, two of the best books I've ever put pen to because of the content. His is good. Also. Yeah, he the content. Bad about me. So yeah, he did. But now but we're the, friendly. But you talk bad about him too. Okay, I talk okay. bad about everybody. Yes, Please. that's what I'm I, saying. I, so I you can't my, be mad when every people time come I hit the sidewalk. I never know who I'm running into. <laughs> <Right. maybe. laughs> exactly. And you know what? I don't even recognize you, but you could be the cousin of. For instance, LL Cool J. And then you say, why are you talking about my cousin? Right. Yes. Right. Or Method And Man. then hit me right. in the head with a bucket and some water. Right. And I can't call the cops because the cops aren't defending themselves. How right. are they going to defend me? Right. Exactly. Pause. Exactly. She mm. said pause. All right. All right. I'm, I'm a curve around. I'm a curve around. We're going to move on. We're going to okay. move on. Um, how you doing? Everybody says that, right? Every look, look, somebody up there. But I wonder if he knows the origin of how you're doing. I don't feel like talking about that. No, because it doesn't mean the same thing, right? That was that was secret code when nobody was gay, and now everyone's gay, so it doesn't even matter. But I called that too, right? Back in the day, Bill Cosby, plastic surgery, R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. and everybody's gay. <laughs> and how you doing? Now it's just a friendly greeting to the world. How you doing? That's it. Do what? All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just saying, ask, Karen. We can't answer any of these questions. Oh. We laugh. We cry. Yeah, I know. Well, that's comedy, too. Mm -hmm. um, the safe house experience. When I heard that, and again, that's... You called it a safe house? What, what was it? Sober house? Oh. <laughs> Same thing. What, what's the difference? What's the difference? Were you safe there? Okay. There we go. What, precipitate, what Karen, precipitated that? It's hard to explain that, so I prefer not to, because no one would understand it. But because were, whatever, for you because, to do that... Mm -mm. No? There were things in my life going on where I knew I had to sit and quiet everything and not have knocks on the door. I don't need to be interrupted. I don't need a phone. I just need to think. And you might think it's crazy because a lot of regular people would just go like, why didn't you just go to a spa in Connecticut or something like that and breathe? No. And when I came, when I ended up, you know, leaving, because um, the only thing I do, I'd come work my job, talking to 52 countries, and then I'd go back there. But I came out swinging, and I am winting. I am winting right now, you know, and, and, and it's only because I'm a thinker, I'm a plotter, I'm a planner, and I have what? Futuristic vision. Do you uh, remember that? I remember that. From the book. I remember Futuristic that. Futuristic vision. You've got to see it. And then run for it. Like that thoroughbred in the race. Don't look to the left or the right. Run. I'm winting. And my son is winting. Yes, he is. Beautiful too, by the way. Thank you. I know, oh right? God. I was like, wait that a minute. Boy. How did He's that He's 18. What? He'll be 19. And it's me and him against the world. And... And on that note, let me just thank you again. Wendy will be around the country, y'all, starting in Oakland, California. Excuse me, and on I Saturday. And I will expound on the number twos yes. and the removal of the wig and, you know, big dick, little dick. Oh, oh, okay. Look, look, everyone's showing up. Okay, Tampa, Florida, Detroit, Michigan, Newark. New Jersey, Cleveland, yeah. Ohio, Philly, Atlanta. She's going to do two nights there. Yeah. The tour is called, for the record, do the mm-hmm. No, it's oh. called Wendy and Friends, for the record. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking for me to badmouth my family, then you might as well stay home. Oh, why would someone do that? No, look, there are small-minded people that do those things. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, look, they, all, they got uh, it. But, but look, I'm grown. I'm grown, and and all I have to do is hold my breath, stop reading stories, but I do say, mm-hmm, okay, okay now, all right, giddy up, Wendy, giddy up, run that race, race with you the thoroughbred, on. yes, yeah, and uh, so if you're looking for that, you might as well stay home. Look at me, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be selling tickets, not telling people to stay home. No, no. They, but, no, you don't want them coming and heckling you. But if you. you're looking for new life, Wendy, right? Talking that talk about penises. Uh huh. <laughs> talking that shit. 
Wait, wait. <laughs> Let's go. I'll have a rompers and whatever twerking outfits that Willie has for me. I'll be featuring flat booty with no threading, but we can talk about that too. Um, my four co- comedian friends are going to be funny as well, and it's going to be a show. So, you know, get a babysitter, leave the immaturity at home. Hecklers, I will come for you before you come for me. Don't do it. Don't do it. And, and come, and by the way, the VIP tickets are, I think you're like in the front row or whatever. I have to ask Bernie, whatever. Bernie's always hatching a plan. I mean, he swooped into my life. He's only been in my life for like three months and it's yeah, been a I, tornado. He's amazing. Where'd you find him? And does he have a brother? We need to clone Bernie. You have no idea how I found Bernie. I don't even want to talk about it. It's okay. just too confusing. But Bernie managed Rosie O'Donnell for 17 years and Martha for three. And he is a civilized man of a particular age um, who wears a suit like nobody's business. And that's what I, and hard shoes. And that's what I need in my life at this point in my life. I, I need somebody who's been around the block. Not that and, block. At, not that block. <laughs> no, but, but I, somebody who's been around the block who can be able to lead me. Because I do ask Wendy, but who am I going to ask? You know, I ask my mom, my dad, my older sister. I ask Karen. I need smart people in my life that, and I'm a listener. And, you know, I, and because and, uh, I'll say to Bernie, you know, well, Bernie, you know, this is what's happening and this is what I'm going to do. Convince me why I shouldn't do it. And then he says something, and I'm like, well, I'm doing it anyway. That's a dumb answer. Or, you know what, Bernie, you're right. You're right. And my, my um, chief of staff, she doesn't want to be called an assistant. You better not. She will punch you in your face. <laughs> my chief of staff, my, uh, my, chief, my chief of staff and Bernie. And, and the staff is who? Me and Bernie. <laughs> who are you chiefing and staffing? Okay, so anyway, but my chief of staff, Leah and Bernie, are two people who've entered my life. You know, um, I hired Bernie, and then he and I, I said, we need an assistant. And she said, no, it's chief of staff. Um, And I love that right off the bat. And they're all tight. I like this new you. Everybody gets along. And turns out, Bernie is such a legion, not legend, legion, in what he does. Most of the people in in the Wendy building on 26th Street no Bernie. They're like, oh my gosh, hugs. I'm like, why are you hugging him? No, this is my guy. What is, oh, well, we've known Bernie since this and we've known Bernie since that. Oh my gosh, when do you pick the right person? And then Leah rules with an iron fist. She will wrangle you and then smile. She's, she's cute. She's wrangling together this, this tour, the flight plans and whatever, whatever she's doing. I have no That's idea. Amazing. All I know is that my job is to breathe. When those doors open, come out swinging, because I've got a whole building of people from receptionist to cameraman to, you know, everybody else. I know it looks like, you know, cable access show the way I do it, but I do that by design because it's entertaining to me. I'm a little messy and it's entertaining to you. You know, I can own, I'm just Wendy. If you want a civilized conversation, then change the channel. If you want to be entertained, if you want to be entertuned, then thanks for watching. I love that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you for listening. Yes. I'll see you tomorrow at 10. Right. Ta-da! Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. We laughed. We cried. And now I go get my lashes done. Right. We got two questions. What? How you Why doing not? is one. All right. No, from the people. They came here to see you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, what? Right. We forgot they this came. part. Yeah. All right. This, All right. Hey, so if you're listening on demand, hey, you're getting a little bonus here. A little bit more Wendy. The bonus hour. The bonus hour. Okay. is Actually, yes. And we're going to have uh, people ask questions. They filled out a form or whatever, but I never got the questions. Oh, so here we're just we go. going. It's going to be random. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That's well, okay. okay. I can curb you. Say your name and where you're from and then hit Wendy here with a- Here she is. There Hair. You go. Hair and glitter <laughs> pants. Go Hi, ahead. my name is Michelle. I'm from Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. Hi. Hi, how are you? Mm. I had a question. Um, I wanted to know um, what sh- are you planning on doing a show with Dee Barnes? Because you said you were going to like hire her. I was just wondering what's happening with that. Dee Barnes. Okay. Dee Barnes be v- from Puffy's thing? Uh, freeze. Okay. Thank you. 
Ka Karen, stay plugged in. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> Dee Barnes got her lights punched out by Dr. Dre at a party. Oh, Dee Barnes. <laughs> Boom. Okay, thank you, Wendy. That's why I need a black china in my life, obviously. <laughs> To be plugged in. Exactly. Child. All right. Uh, no, D was around during my time. Was she? She had oh, a show right. on BET. Okay, gosh. And it was called, um, was or it, MTV. Was it good? Yes. Oh, Between God. me and D, we were the only plugs to the entire entertainment industry. Okay. Okay, but she said a little bit too much, and Dr. Dre was on some mess regarding his attitude towards her, and there was a party. It was the Def Jam Christmas party, and you know how those were legendary. D goes to the party by herself because she knows she's going and she's going to see everybody, right? Dr. Dre beat her up and threw her down the steps. And nobody helped her. People stepped over her and around her. And the music continued and the whole bit. Look that up. So D comes on my TV show, the Wendy, Just Wendy show. She comes on the talk show about, what, three months ago or yeah, something like that? She wanted to come on the show and the booking department had no idea who she was, you know? But see, nothing gets booked without me knowing and don't just deny people without me saying no. And I do that often also, you know? I, my favorite days on the show are when there are no guests, honestly. I like me, you, Ask Wendy, and the shenanigans. A little trendy at Wendy, we give away some luggage. You know we love a luggage, a curling iron, a vacuum cleaner on that damn show. <laughs> no, but D. So I told Booking, I was like, yes, book her, get into the groove. You know, it's a cultural thing also doing this show because I, I am very... Black. <laughs> no, I'm not, me. I'm block. You're block. Yes, block. you are block, actually. You are bougie as no, hell. No, I'm not. No, yes, I'm not. you are. You no, are I'm very bougie. You are bougie. Well, yes. I have bougie tendencies, yes, but I also do. have hood tendencies. Yes, it's All a right. conflict. Is that cancer? It's a ah. conflict of interest, my entire thing. I know. I, it's that should a be your next book. Ooh. Bougie and hood, the tendencies of it all. No, conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. I know um, so no, I tell I'm them, I said, no, book D. And, and, you know, make sure that the producer, look, who's producing this? I got a strip of producers and I love them all. But, you know, I like, and they're all good at what they do. But there's certain ones who, who extract better questions out of, depending on the guest. You know what I'm saying? So I said, book D, and I want her to come on. So we're chit-chatting, and then she says that she wants to write a book, and she heard that I'm into the publishing game, and, you know, I, I said, well, I'll walk you in the door. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to hold your hand through the process. I'm not going to write it. I'm no Karen Hunter. I don't have time, honey. I'm out here Neither now. Do I. All right, I'm busy all the time. Um, but um, but um, what happened with D, honestly? She big timed me. Oh, don't sweat on me. I got my show. I got my publishing. I wrote seven books. She's the one sweating about I'm almost homeless. You know, remember we gave her uh, some money towards her GoFundMe or whatnot. And then along, on the, along with that, you know, I said, well, I'll walk you through the door. And literally, like, you know, when I say, all right, thanks for being here and we'll be right back. And I'm always whispering to my guests. What I was whispering to her was, give me your number, give me your name, and or your bless number you. and stuff like that. How long, bless you, that, how long are you in New York? As soon as I get off the show, because I still had more show to do, I'm working and moguling at the same time. Did I just say moguling? Yes. Who have I become? <laughs> no, but, but I'm working and doing business at the same time. So I said, when I get off the show, you know, um, I'm gonna make you know some some calls. Well, really, one call. I ha I had one one call to make, and it could have happened. So I make the call. She goes, uh, whatever ended up happening. D saw something that I, she caught a ball that I wasn't pitching. Okay. And I'm like, okay, well, um, and she's cool. I'm cool with her. Like I haven't talked to her since then, but I don't know what happened to okay. D, except right. for what I just told you. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I'm a sharer. Sharing. I'm grateful for everything that I have. I am not that girl that you might think that I am. How is she? Is she a diva? Is she a bitch? Is she this or that? I can be all of the above, but I use my powers for good, not evil.
<laughs> you know, and I prefer not to use them that that way. I like to twerk and jerk and wipe my teeth and you know giggle and and have fun. My mom taught me that, but my mom also has a gun in her wig, and she will pull it out and sharpshoot you. You you know what I mean? Okay, so oh sorry. Hi, hi, I'm Sharon, and I just want to know. After this experience of yours with the troubled times, the life exposed, the tabloids, and paparazzi following you, mm -hmm. how do you think this has changed how you will approach or handle someone who's going through troubled times? Does, has it changed how you will expose, talk to, or uh, handle someone now that you've had this personal experience? Yeah, I've got patience for Angela. You know what I'm saying? Me and Black China are friends. Are you serious? Y you know, uh, um, it's changed me in a rougher way, not mm -hmm. a nicer way, because I was already nice, you know. But Any regrets though? Because you, you, you. Rougher. People, wait, hold like, on. I mean, I mean, see, just right there. Yeah, so, like, you know. Wait, you, wait. Let me just answer. It's it's changed me in a rougher way. I got twenty four hours in a day. I don't have twenty five hours. I don't have time for thieves, liars, and disloyal people. So, which one are you? Because if you're one of them. You see what I'm saying? What I mean is how will you handle other, other people? people yeah. Now oh, well, I don't have time for that. No, yeah, but, 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 but I don't have time for that. What she Because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's situation is different. It's like if you take a girl who gets pregnant at 16. You take two girls pregnant at 16, but one of them has a different situation where maybe the family is wealthy and she doesn't have to be in school or whatever, or, or, and then one's in the projects and, and, and she doesn't know her father, her mother is a crackhead. Two totally different situations. So I, I am more compassionate to people, but I'm also most compassionate about myself and okay. my son. Okay. So if you expect a nicer Wendy, you ain't got that. Uh, Wendy was already nice. Wendy just was already nice. I really don't have time for your bullshit. You know, you got yourself in this situation. Get yourself so out. So you're going to talk about it no matter what, and even if it... Okay. Please. Okay. Who, how am I going to pay my bill? You mean it's hot topics going to soften? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. It's going to be warm topics. N no. Huh? Lukewarm topics? No. No? Hot topics okay. have t are still the same hot topics, except now... Because I'm a hot topic, I don't mind sharing. And ironically, the show has never done better, you weirdos. Um, <laughs> look, when it was me going home, right, taking him for braces, making a filet mignon for dinner. Oh, my mouth is watering. Oh, God. You know, and some French, French fries and enjoying Lifetime and telling you what I saw on the news. You still watch the show. But all of a sudden, I'm not cooking at home. You know, I'm flitting around You're town. Cooking. I'm cooking, okay. Are you cooking, Wendy? Are you cooking? I haven't used I, I haven't used my stovetop yet. Okay. But I've used my oven because okay. it's the same thing as the microwave. Are we using metaphors? <laughs> no, I'm trying to I'm trying to curb you. Okay, all right. Um, and I yeah, just but but no, okay. no, because right. I can only be who I am, and the core of me is a nice person. If you squint at your TV and look through, the core of me is nice, lovely, charming, welcoming, giving to a fault, if you know what I'm saying. Right. But, um, and anyway, the answer is no. Okay. All right. All right. I'll that's still it. be that bitch. All right. That's you. Uh huh. All right. So chicken livers await. Um, I'm jealous. No, I have to get my eye. Oh, um, the eyelashes, eyelashes then done. chicken livers. All right. Well, thanks for coming by. <sighs> Feel like um, we still have some catching up to do. I mean, Karen, please. You're you're you got my number. You know okay. where I you know where yeah. I stay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for showing up. Thank Appreciate you very all much. You. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Thank you.